Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 5 o'clock p.m. and 5.30 ver session of the 2023 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, Making Classic Clothing in Open Simulator Worlds. Our speaker is Beth Ghostraven. Beth started designing system and prim clothing for educators and other professionals. Her clothing is available free at the Ghost Raven Professional Attire Shop at OSCC in Region 5. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. This session is being live streamed and recorded. So if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC23. Welcome everybody, and let's begin the session. Beth? Hi, I'm Beth Ghost Raven. I'm a retired middle school teacher librarian in the physical world. In Second Life, I own the Book and Tankard Pub in Victoria City, Caledon, and Ghost Raven Professional Attire, Classic Clothing for Educators. I'm Communications Chair for the VWBPE Conference, an unofficial liaison between education groups in Second Life. There's a giver box on the table right to my left um, on, please take a copy, you can buy a copy free. It includes a note card with sources, a background screen, a pose animation, some sample textures, sample clothing, UV layers, a UV outline outfit, shading aids, and there might be some more stuff in there too. Um, the slides and the speakeasy text are also in there. Fran, thank you. Part of the learning curve for teaching and learning in Second Life and Open Simulator is the need to personalize one's avatar. Teachers need their appearance to enhance and not detract from their instruction. Students need to feel immersed in order to, uh, to learn effectively, and personalizing their avatars contribute to this, in my opinion. This presentation will help you to explore some possibilities for creating your own clothing. Here's what we'll learn about today. Today, wearing safely classic clothing and attachments, editing the clothing you already have, finding and adapting free textures, making system clothing using the Firestorm viewer tools, making and saving outfits briefly, using Photoshop to make system clothing very briefly, We'll see how our time goes. I had originally planned to do this workshop style, but 20 minutes isn't really long enough for a workshop. But feel free to follow along with anything if you want to. This presentation shows how I got started, but there are lots of different ways to do the same things. System clothing has the following characteristics. The texture is applied to the shape as if painted on, layered over, over the skin. It may be customized using sliders. It may be worn by mesh avatars with fakes on mesh. It has extremely low complexity. The icons on the right of this slide, except for the alpha layer, show system layer, system items in your inventory. If you um, filter it to show only clothing. These will be the only things that show up. Wearing safely clothing, just classic clothing and attachments. Have you ever just slide five, how to put on clothing so you don't appear naked? Have you ever teleported somewhere and it appears that most of the people there are not wearing clothes? 
It's kind of disconcerting. Often they're not wearing parts of their bodies either. Even though it's an avatar, you probably don't want to look naked inadvertently. If you want to avoid that, and that's what I mean by safely wearing clothes, follow these two rules. Oops. Right click and add clothing and attachments and always wear a system shirt and pants under your mesh outfits. So while your clothes are resing for others, you don't appear naked. Editing classic clothing and attachments. Permission, also called perms. M equals modifiable. C equals copyable. T equals transferable. Something that's full perm is modifiable, copyable, and transferable. Most items, though, are either copy or transferable. Permissions are one of the trickiest parts of virtual worlds. Something might say no modify when it's actually only the script inside that can't be changed. If the item doesn't have any permissions after it in your inventory, it's full perm. However, if it's something that you made yourself, it will not show permissions because, of course, it's full perm for you. You can see them by editing or by right clicking and selecting properties. Usually these are older freebies. Hang on. I think that's something I left in from, from before. When modifying, make a copy first. It's really easy to totally mess something up when you're trying to customize. If that happens, and the item is not copyable, check with the designer to see if they'll give you another copy of the item. Many designers are easy to work with and willing to help. Slide nine, editing system clothing. To edit a system clothing item, you wear it, right or add it, right click it in your inventory and click edit. The appearance window will open. That's what you're seeing on the, um, the left hand side of the slide, or no, the right hand side of the slide, sorry. In this jacket layer, the upper fabric above the waist is a template created in Photoshop, which cannot be altered in world. Because it is grayscale, though, it can be recolored by clicking the color slash tint box, which opens the color picker. That's what you see on the left side of the slide. Make sure you click OK before you close the color picker to save the color you chose. You can also shorten the sleeves or pants legs or change the waistline if it's modifiable. Classic clothing, trim clothing and hair. These are attached to the avatar. They may be customized if modifiable. They may show natural looking movement, especially if flexi. Flexi things, flexi skirts look great while you're dancing. The cube or object icons in the um, screenshot on the right side of the slide show the prim clothing here. Except for the AO, the animation overrider, you can wear or res the object and edit it. By the way, AOs are a key to having a professional looking avatar. The way an avatar moves without one is very jerky and looks kind of weird. There are male and female AOs available at the OSCC shopping zone to start with.
Make a copy and pose. Before you edit objects attached to your avatar, make sure your avatar will hold still while you work. Here are four ways to do that. A pose stand can be rest. When you stand on it, it holds your avatar still so you can edit attachments without slipping. If you use the Firestorm viewer, there's a button you can use for poses. In your toolkit, there is a T-Pose animation. Look for it in G look for GPA Toolbox Clothing Building Tools, tools in your inventory. If you haven't opened it yet, right-click, add, and touch it to get the folder. Double-click the T-Pose animation and click, click Play in World or Play Locally, and that will put you in a T-Pose. Actually, the default Firestorm preferences make your avatar pose when you edit clothing. I took that off in my preferences because I don't want to pose every time I'm editing clothing. Sometimes I do it on the sly. If you do not want to um, have your T-Pose automatically come on when you're editing system clothing, go to Avatar. Preferences, Move and View, where it says automatically pose avatar during whatever. Uncheck Appearance. Editing wearable prim objects. In the Wearing or Worn tab of Inventory or Appearance, you can right click on an object and choose edit. Oh, sorry. I keep clicking. Hang on a second. I keep clicking the slides when I mean to click my speakeasy. It's OK, Beth. OK, here we go. Moving worn objects. Even if an object doesn't have modify perms, you can still move it around unless it's rigged mesh. Because my avatar is shorter than most, I almost always have to lower my necklaces. Some items have resized scripts in them. If that's the case, do not edit, but click on the object to open the resize menu. Be sure to make a copy before you make any changes if possible. Can you tell I've messed up a lot <laughs> trying to edit my clothing? Okay, the next part of making your own clothing is making fabric textures. Almost all of the textures that I buy in Second Life are only licensed for that grid. So far, I haven't found a texture merchant for OpenSim, so if I want to use textures in OpenSim, I need to make them myself. I find and adapt textures that I find on the internet, being careful to respect intellectual property rights. I almost always use textures licensed for Creative Commons CC0, which means it's public domain, free for use for any purpose without attribution. Creative Commons does not mean it's public domain. There are many creative, many different kinds of Creative Commons licenses, but the CC0 one means you can. I like acknowledging artists, but it's not practical to do when I'm making clothing. Okay, that's my five minute warning. I'm going to scoot through this. All of these slides are in the toolkit, so you can see. What to do and the, the text from the chat is in there, too. Let's see.
And if they want to find this, uh, it's on uh, which sim as well. I know you have the box out front here, but you said it's that a, you have a, a place as well. France says it's um, it's revved on at every landing point, I think. And then it's in my speaker booth, which is booth number eight in region three. Okay, great. Thanks. To make system clothing from scratch, you can create it. Here's how you do it in the Firestorm OS viewer. You add new clothes. There's a plus sign at the bottom left of your inventory. If you click that and then click new clothes. Thank you, Fran. I don't even need a post, Dan, because it's included in the viewer. In inventory, you click the plus sign at the bottom, then new clothes, then new socks. The socks appear in my clothing folder where I can right click and add them. Once I'm wearing the socks, I can right click and edit them. So I'm going to upload a texture. You click the plus sign at the bottom again and upload image. Let's see. In edit, you drag the texture onto the texture box. When I drag a texture onto the fabric panel, I have no control over what the texture looks like on that clothing. This one is sort of acceptable, but I need to use a texture manipulation program like Photoshop. And I'm not going to talk about that in the next section because time does not allow, but you can look at it yourself. It works better on a shirt. You can use the color picker to change the, um, the color. You can tint your clothing whether you've used a texture or not. And even if the clothing has a tint to it, you can add a tint. Like say it's a blue shirt, you can add a red tint and make it purple. Make sure you click OK before you close the color picker. Just like with any computer file, you can save as a different name to preserve the original piece of clothing. I use a naming system that works alphabetically, but use whatever works for you. Son, are there any questions coming up yet? Uh, I didn't see anything in the local chat. I saw a comment on YouTube. Uh, just uh, Lorraine was saying we've all done that that before, Beth, when you were mentioning <laughs> one of the things. But that's all so far. Are there, are there any questions from the audience tonight? Give you one, one, one more shot at it. I just want to talk briefly about making outfits. I love making outfits. Once you ha have put together the clothing that you want to wear, like for instance, I forgot to model my um, my UV outfit for you. This is some clothing that I made using the UV textures that Robin Wood made. UV is just, um, it's not for ultraviolet or anything like that. It's just for letters in the alphabet after ST, I think, um, or before XY, I don't know. But you can see what this likes here. I'll turn around so you can see the back of it. But that shows you how the textures are mapped onto the body. Sally, I don't have classes that are scheduled, but I would be happy to schedule something if you would like. And I think um, Rhiannon suggested I should have something made like this for myself in real life. That would be fun. Oh, this slide is something I made that I haven't seen anywhere else. These are the bakes on mesh or system layers in the order in which they appear on your avatar. Um, starting from bottom with the shape to the top with the alpha layers. So whatever is on top of something. Appears on top of it. 
if you have more than one thing that is the same type, like say you're wearing three shirts, you can edit the outfit and this little breakout thing on the left part of the slide shows you how to do that. Let's see, let me, I'm gonna go through here. There's my questions file. And you can contact me at that email, or of course you can contact me in world, either here or in Second Life. And I have the same avatar name everywhere. If you would like to friend me, that's fine too. Well, thank you, Beth, uh, for an informative and interesting presentation. Um, as a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out conference.opensimulator.org to see what is coming up on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session, which will begin at 5.30 p.m. in this keynote region, and it's entitled Developing Virtual Simulations to Support Retention of Skills in Essential Newborn Care. Also, we encourage you to visit our OSCC 23 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths uh, located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and the audience.